Today we're going to be talking about how the United States enters the war. And just to remind you, remember the, the war starts, all the other countries had all kinds of reasons. Uh, Germany entered the war because uh, they were threatened by France. Uh, France entered the war because uh, Russia asked them for help and because they hated Germany. G Russia entered the war because Serbia had been attacked by Austria. Austria had been entered the war because they were attacked, you know, the, their crown prince was attacked and they asked Germany to enter. And Italy entered the war because, well, they wanted to capture part of Austria. For the United States, however, those reasons aren't good enough. And the United States, well, the United States kind of thinks of themselves as different, as, uh, as the good guys. And uh, that really affects how the people view the war. When the war begins, the United States wants to stay out of it. They want to be neutral. Neutral means to not choose a side. Uh, a couple reasons, three reasons. Let's first, the people in the United States really didn't care about what happened in Europe. Uh, you know, it's a European problem. The, the people, of the countries of Europe are fighting. They're fighting over alliances. They're fighting militarism. And people in the United States don't care. You know, the, the people in the United States are immigrants. Some of them are from Germany. Some are from Austria. Some of them are from England. And they left that all behind. They left it behind, and so they're, they're, it's not their concern anymore. They don't care about it. Uh, people in the United States wanted to sell to both sides. You know, pe they, the business of the United States is business. Uh, it's making money. And they wanted to sell guns, cars, planes, ships, food, ammunition to both sides. And if you pick a side, you can't sh sell to the other. Third, the United States Army wasn't ready to fight a war. I mean, the United States Army was was pretty bad. It was really, first off, it was really, really small. For a country that as big as the U.S., the, the Army was really small, probably about, you know, 50,000, 60,000 soldiers, maybe. And not only that, they weren't prepared. They were, they were pretty bad. Um, I'll show you how bad they were. <coughs> the United States, well, let's see. In 1915, Pancho Villa... Uh, from Mexico attacked the United States. He actually crossed, a, crossed the border and uh, robbed a bank and ended up killing a bunch of uh, Americans. Uh, the U.S. Army chased after him. They went down into Mexico, chased after him. Um, Pancho Villa went up into the mountains. They chased after him for about, I don't know, eight, nine months, and they never caught him. That's how bad they were. And so the U.S. Army has no chance fighting against the, the best armies in the world like the Germans and the British. However, things began to change as the war went on and on. Uh, first, let me tell you about the Zimmerman telegram. A British Secret Service agent found a telegram from Zimmerman, a German government official, and uh, the telegram promised Mexico that if Mexico fought on the German side against the United States, then Mexico would get California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas back. Well, that sounds like a pretty good deal, right? Uh, let me say again, if Mexico fights on the German side against the United States, then when Germany wins, Cal Mexico will get California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. Uh, why is that not a good deal? Well, is it anywhere does it say that uh, Germany would help Mexico? Uh, no, it just says that you know Mexico has to fight the United States. And, well, Mexico why, very wisely said, we don't know this guy Zimmerman, we've never heard of him, we've never talked to him. Uh, we have nothing to do with it. And, but regardless, when it came out, that made the United States really, really mad. And, uh, well, when you think about it, you know, was it a real telegram or was it a fake? Hmm. Next reason why the United States begins to join is called unrestricted submarine warfare. Uh, Germany, because, uh, the British had the best navy in the world. In order to get past the British, the Germans invented a new, um, well, not a new, but an invention called the submarine. Uh, the Germans called them the U-boat, for undersea boat, uh, and they would sink ships carrying supplies to the enemy. At first, the submarines would warn the ships. Uh, you know, they'd pop out of the water, they would send a message, you know, everybody get off your ship, we're going to sink it. Uh, but when that happened, the ship started to attack them. And so they started to attack him without warning. And they would shoot a little underground, underwater missile called a torpedo and, you know, blow up and sink the ship. Uh, American ships were going over to Europe to sell to Germany and to sell to Britain. And the American ships started getting sunk. 
And when the Americans complained, the, the Germans apologized and said they wouldn't do it anymore. But after, you know, that was uh, in 1914, but in 1915, the Germans started again. And uh, by 1916, the Germans were sinking all ships all kind of over the place. May 7th, 1915, the British passenger line Lusitania was sunk with over 1,100 civilian dead. Civilian, remember, means people who are not in the military, people who are not soldiers. Uh, the, uh, if you look at the picture, you know, it looks basically like Titanic. The Titanic was its sister ship. That means it was built by the same company at, at roughly about the same time. It was... Uh, the Germans warned the, the Lusitania that uh, it was sailing to a war zone and it risked being sunk. Uh, the British said, we don't care. And uh, including over 100 Americans who died in the, uh, in the sinking. And that, of course, made the United States mad again. Now, once the United States joins the war, it uh, not only just joins, it goes all in, which means that everything in the United States is devoted to helping fight the war. Now, this is called total war. Uh, just to let you know, like before, before World War I, uh, war didn't really affect people that much if you weren't a soldier. Uh, the, during a war, if uh, you know, your country was under attack, uh, soldiers would go and kill other soldiers and fight other soldiers and really didn't uh, bother people who weren't soldiers that much. Uh, you kept on doing your job. You kept on, you know, farming your fields. You probably had to give, uh, pay more taxes, pay more, uh, give more food to the government. But uh, you didn't really do nothing. It didn't really hurt you that much. World War One starts to change all that, and this poster kind of shows you. Okay, uh, America, the hope of all who suffer, the dread of all who wrong. Save food. You know, as an American, this is your duty to save food. You know, these posters uh, showed up everywhere. You know, everyone has a duty to do something. Uh, your work, uh, you know, you were working as a farmer growing food. Well, the food that you grow now needs to go to help fight the war. Food can help. Food does help fight wars. Uh, you know, the the people in Europe uh, who are who are being attacked. You know, the United States started selling them food uh, to help them keep on fighting. The uh, if you worked in a in a shop uh, making pencils, uh, well, all of a sudden, what if we change that and you started making bullets for the guns? Making if you made clothes, you can start making uniforms and tents and blankets. Uh, if you made cars, you could be making uh, tanks and airplanes. All the stuff that helps fight the war. This is total war. Total war means all the resources of a country are directed to it. It means everything about the country is used to help fight the war. Conscription. If you are a man, you are healthy and the right age, usually about 18 to 35, maybe 40, uh, you, get, you have to serve in the army. You, know, you have to do it. Uh, industry. That means the factories. You need to, was needed to make things for the war. Food is directed to a war effort. Everyone who could work, including women and African Americans, were allowed to work in a factory making things for the war. And this is actually a big change. Uh, before, uh, African Americans, women, uh, Latinos were not allowed to take uh, these kind of jobs uh, because uh, these were reserved for white males. Well, all of a sudden, all the, if you, the white males had to go and join the army, which meant that the people still needed to work in the factories. And so African Americans were given jobs, Latinos were given jobs, women were given jobs. And these were good jobs. They, uh, they paid a lot of money. They uh, they worked regular hours, they were safe working conditions, and they allowed people to, you know, do a lot better. Uh, Latinos, uh, this is the first big wave of immigration to the United States. You know, they went to Mexico and said, we need more people to work here in Los Angeles. And so uh, thousands of uh, Mexicans moved to L.A. at that time to work in the factories. And once the United States started cranking out weapons and uh, guns, supplies, food, uh, that turned the tide, you know, which meant that, that it changed everything. Why? Because the United States could make more guns, more weapons, more supplies than all of the rest of the countries combined. So for every plane that the Germans shot at, 
the United States could make, you know, 10 more. For every ship the, Uni the Germans sank, the United States could, ma could make, you know, 100 more. And uh, you could keep on making more, making them faster than the Germans could destroy them, which means that the United States and the Allies are going to win. So the only question is: the, Is the United States going to get there in time? Here's the map of, of uh, Europe again. The red, of course, is the Central Powers. Notice they're right in the middle, so the Central Powers. The green is the Allies. The French on the uh, west side. The Russians on the east side. And notice how the Germans are fighting on two sides. They're fighting on two sides. And uh, the question is, um, is the Americans going to get there in time? And here's why. Uh, the Germans basically are the entire central powers. You know, they're the Austrian, the Hungarians are there, the Ottoman Empire is there. They're all fighting. The Germans are basically the ones... Uh, with all the power and for the last three years from 1914 to 1917 it had been a tie the Germans had it had been a tie and uh, nobody was winning just millions of people were dying now how do you fight somebody with uh, when you're fighting on two sides you divide your soldiers in half half the Germans are fighting against the French and British half are fighting against the Russians well and this is the way it on for three years you know, just a tie with Germany fighting with half its soldiers. Suddenly, Russia gives up. You know, we had the, the, the revolution happens, the communists take over, and they pull Russia out of the war. When that happens, all of a sudden, that means that Germany can take half of its soldiers and bring them to fight against the British and French. You know, remember that the, it had fought to a tie with the British and French with only half its soldiers. And now, all of a sudden, you have the other half coming. So it's a question, who's going to get there first? The other half of the German army or the Americans? And the, and the Germans, when the Russians dropped out, the Germans immediately attacked. They knew the Americans were coming. This is all in 1917. And so they tried to catch up to the, uh, catch the British and the French before the Americans could get there. The Americans rushed the soldiers there. The... Uh, the first Americans landed, and they got to, they stopped the Germans barely in time. Uh, the Germans had attacked, and the 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 American the U.S. Marines, U.S. Marines landed and made their reputation as Marines. I mean, Marines are regarded as the uh, the first ones there, the toughest, and uh, they made their worldwide reputation at a place called Bella Wood. At Bella Wood, the Americans were thrown up against the Germans, the finest soldiers in the world, and they held. It was in the middle of the woods. It was uh, tough fighting. The Americans refused to give in, and they stopped the Germans barely. When the Americans got there, they made an immediate impact. Uh, the French and the British generals uh, said, great, we have all these, you know, millions of brand new soldiers. We we're going to use them to help turn the tide against the, the Germans and give us their soldiers and we will help and we will use them. And they wanted to use them to, to fight the exact same way the British and the French have been fighting. Remember, which is to hide in the trench and then to pop out of the trench, run across no man's land, attack the German side. Uh, and, you know, if that way you have so many people you can get there uh, despite all the machine guns and uh, you know you'll lose a lot of people but you'll be able to get past them right well the Americans looked at that and they saw what the British and French have been doing for three years and I said no that's stupid we're not gonna fight that way and the Americans said we're not gonna be fighting as part of the British Army as part of it. we want to be the American Army we want to fight separately and the uh, the uh, the American general, uh, General um, John Black Jack Pershing, uh, refused. He said, I'm, I'm going to be an American general, and I'm going to take uh, my American soldiers, and we're going to fight the American way. Not like, a, not like British and French, but the American way. And because of that, the, the Americans didn't suffer the, the mass casualties and de dying soldiers just like the British and French did. And so the war wasn't quite as bad. And to remember him, uh, the, the, we still remember uh, General Pershing. Uh, 
You might have heard of Pershing Square in Los Angeles. Uh, it's one of the metro stops, one of the places to, that people hang out in L.A. You should go there. There's a big statue of him that's still there today. Now, once the Americans started getting there, they started coming and coming and coming. And the, the ships kept on coming and more guns and more bullets and more planes and more tanks. It was pretty clear the Allies are going to win. You know, the, the Germans had had taken them on, they had, uh, they, they had attacked, and they had been stopped before they could get to Paris. And so the Allies are going to win. There's no way the Germans can win. It's, it's, it's clear. Now, think about the Germans. They were losing, but they're not stupid. They're, uh, they, they're, they realize... We, are, we haven't lost the war yet. The war's not over, but we're going to lose. And there is no way they can, we can win. There's no way they can beat the Allies. Uh, the, the Allies had more supplies. They had fresh soldiers. Uh, there is no way they're going to win. Second, the, uh, the Allies have begun to attack, but they hadn't even reached the border of Germany. You know, it's, they're not even close to attacking Germany yet. Uh, the Germans, however, were, were listening to what the Americans were saying. They're hearing the, what Woodrow Wilson was promising about the 14 points, about the war to end all wars, the, uh, the war to make the world safe for democracy. And the Germans, people were saying, hey, that sounds pretty good. You know, we're, it's, we're, we could be, uh, if the Americans win, then we're going to have democracy. We're going to have human rights. We're going to have uh, the right to choose our own leaders. That sounds pretty good. Why are we still fighting this? And so the Germans decided to end the war. And so at 11 o'clock in the morning on the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, a ceasefire was set. Both sides agreed to stop shooting. And... Uh, the sad part of it is that all the way up until 10.59 in the morning, all the way up until the actual time of the ceasefire, they kept on shooting. They kept on attacking. They kept on, kept on with the war. And, men, people, and can, people continued to die and be wounded all the way up until 10.59. But at 11 o'clock, the war was over. The, uh, the biggest war in human history to that point was finally over, 1914 to 1918. And we still celebrate November 11th today. Uh, here in the United States, we, we call it Veterans Day. And we recognize, it used to be called Armistice Day. Armistice means the, a ceasefire. But uh, we still celebrate it to honor all all soldiers who've ever fought in any war. And so we honor them that day.